Knock, knock. Hi guys. So after doing a video on skin cancer last week, I got a lot of questions about how to prevent skin cancer. So these are all the tips that you need to start as early as your late 30s, early 40s, in order to help you prevent skin cancer down the line. And I'm not talking about sun protection. This is what every dermatologist preaches all the time. So this is not gonna be sun protection 101 on how to protect your skin from the sun. This is once you've already gotten sun damage, how do you reverse it so that you can pr help prevent skin cancer down the line, or at least minimize your chances? So first things is what is the precursor lesion to a skin cancer? So the precursor lesion is something called an actinic keratosis, also known as an AK. Now these are little skin cells that have gotten mutations from sun exposure, but they haven't gotten enough DNA damage to make the transition to something like a squamous cell carcinoma. They tend to be pretty small, sometimes a little pink and gritty. Honestly, they can almost be felt more than they can be seen. So a lot of times people come in and they say, my makeup's not sitting down flat. You know, I just am starting to see these little rough spots, but no matter how much I exfoliate, how uh, much I clean my face, they just never come off. That tends to be consistent with an actinic keratosis. So even if you get sun exposure in your teens and your 20s, these actinic keratoses are not likely to show up until later on, usually somewhere starting in your 30s, depending on how bad your sun exposure, but certainly by your 40s, 50s, and 60s. So that's the time really that prevention is key and treatment is key. So what can you do to treat these? So if you just have one, you can do a destructive measure where you freeze it. Um, you can use a this liquid nitrogen gun. I'll show you here. This is what it's like to have uh, liquid nitrogen. It does kind of feel like a brain freeze, like an ice cream headache, and then it can turn to a little blister and peel over several days. Most of the time leaving no spot behind, but sometimes it can leave like a, a hypopigmented scar, just so that you're aware. Now, if you have more than one, generally you're gonna wanna use a cream. And the reason for that is we can use the liquid nitrogen and kind of try to freeze and destroy each and every little one. But oftentimes the freezing becomes less effective when you have more than one lesion. So that's where we get into field therapy. Now, field therapy is anything that kind of treats a whole field of skin. There are lots of different options in this category. I would say the most common ones are certain creams. There are two primary creams that are used for field therapy to destroy actinic keratoses. The first is Effudex. Um, the generic is 5-fluorouracil. It is applied one to two times a day for several weeks, and it causes a lot of redness, um, a lot of itching and pain. It actually is a topical chemotherapy. So just like chemotherapy works inside the body to destroy the cancer cells and leave the normal cells alone, this is similar on the skin where it will destroy any precancer or cancerous cells and leave the normal cells pretty much alone. You will get quite a bit of redness, some itching, some pain, um, and the redness can be expected to last a few weeks after you finish the treatment. Certainly not something you wanna do as you're about to go to a wedding or a big event. The other cream that is commonly used is called Imiquimod or Aldera. And this cream, instead of being a chemotherapy cream, actually uses your own immune system and try to revs it up so that your own immune system will go and kind of clean up the cancer cells. Again, tends to cause a lot of redness, pinkness, itching, pain, and also can cause some flu-like symptoms. So what if you're not really into putting on a cream? What can you do? So you can use a treatment called photodynamic therapy. You can see it here. You put a liquid that is applied to the face, usually the face, although you can use it on other areas like the scalp and the trunk. And then that is activated either by the sunlight going outside, natural light, or going into a red or blue light. And so you're placed in front of that light for usually about 20 minutes or so to activate um, the liquid and that gets incorporated into the precancerous cells, the cancerous cells and helps destroy them similar to the chemotherapy cream. So again, redness can be a side effect, burning can be a side effect. After this treatment, you wanna be super diligent about not getting sun. Even as little sun as like being near a window can cause you severe burning and pain. So I would recommend if you're going to your doctors to get this treatment, even bring a wide brimmed hat because when you walk from the appointment, even to your car, you're gonna feel it. So the last point I make, you're gonna wanna stick around for because it's pretty new information and it's kind of a way to get a two for one where you get your cosmetic procedure and you prevent cancer at the same time. 
So more recent advancements in studying aging skin and skin that's been sun damaged and is prone to developing skin cancer has shown that actually a lot of the cosmetic procedures we've been doing for many, many years actually have some benefit when it comes to decreasing your incidence of skin cancer down the line for treating actinic keratoses. And this makes sense. So a lot of these procedures like chemical peels and lasers turn over the skin and allow new skin to come in and that cycling can get rid of some of sort of the bad damage cells and allow new cells to come up and join the party. So I think where the future is really exciting is that actually the research is showing that it's not just that simple that all these procedures that put little micro traumas in the skin such as lasers, microneedling, dermabrasion, chemical peels that are going deeper or medium depth chemical peels are causing um, essentially like a wound response. So as we age, our skin says, look, I have done enough for you over the years. I am not going to keep making collagen for you. I'm not going to keep making elastin. You do not need firm, beautiful skin to attract a mate. We're going to kind of give this up and focus on other stuff that's going inside. And so because of that, your skin becomes what's called quiescent. It's just not that active. It's not really focused on making new cells and getting rid of the old ones. Now what these procedures that put these little micro holes and initiate this wound response do is by causing that wound, they kind of wake up the system. They say, look, there's a tiny little hole that you have to fix. And then those cells that have been sleeping for a long time, wake up and they say, oh, okay, I'll do my job. And so they get up and they actually start secreting growth factors that bring in all the things that are needed to repair those little holes. And what those growth factors do in addition to repairing the holes is they kind of also stimulate the cell turnover that your skin used to do so well when it was younger and is no longer doing as well when you're older. And so I think one thing you can take away from this is that whether you're getting your chemical peel or your laser or your microneedling to look your best, those procedures may be decreasing the actinic keratoses that you get and may be helping to prevent skin cancer down the line. If you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. I'm a dermatologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. So please like this video, subscribe if you want more videos like this, and please leave in the comments um, things that you want to learn about actinic keratoses, about skin cancer prevention, or really about anything related to the skin. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. Be well.